Hello everyone and this is lesson 2 in the lightning strike tutorial series. So um, in the last one we made the basic lightning okay. and in this one what we'll do is we'll create the ground breaking. So uh, I was going to do particles first but then I realized like if we do the ground break then it will be easier to sort of you know uh, have the particles bounce off not just the ground but also like the breaking pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the core lightning, which is this and use this as collision to break up the ground. Okay. Uh, let's do one thing. Let's just take all of this or hold on a second. Let's take about this much and we'll put it in a network box. Yeah. And we'll call this lightning. Now what I'm going to do is uh, let's take uh, let's, you know, break out this much separately because what I want is I don't want these, like if they're going to hit the ground, I want them to be thicker because it's then easier to collide. So I'll just take this sweep that we have over here and I can just make it thicker and also, you know, adjust the P scale. So I don't want the ground, like I want the ground to be, you know, like these points to be like more solid. Okay, I think this is good. Yeah, and just give it like single polygon caps. Okay, because it, the geometry needs to be closed. Okay, so this is fine. So what we'll do is I'll just create a, this is not a very uh, like super realistic kind of an effect. It's just, I'm combining like a ton of things. So you get an idea of how everything sort of generally works, right? So you have particles and rigid bodies and smoke simulation and everything but nothing at like you know like a production level thing so if you are like hey i can use this in a movie i don't think you can <laughs> but at least you get a basic understanding of how everything works okay so what i'll do is i'm just going to take a simple grid and uh, i'll make it small so i'll make it about one by one okay so not a very big uh, actually even smaller than that okay and uh, let's give it a thicken so you can take a labs thicken. You can take a poly extrude also, even that's fine. Okay, actually just reverse it. So it will go upwards. Yeah. And make it fairly thin. So we'll make it 0 0.02. Okay, I think this is fine. And what's going to happen is like the lightning will sort of come inside this part. So it will sort of, you know, hit it and break it. So what we want to do or what I want to do is uh, I want like the center part to break and then the edges to remain intact. Uh, the first thing we'll do is I'm going to get rid of all of these and we can take a material fracture to just you know quickly break this up. So I'll just take a material fracture and plug that in and you'll get this okay which is fine. Uh, maybe a little bit more so I can just take the scatter points and up that. And also you can sort of just move around the noise, you know, like you can sort of adjust the noise to see like, because the noise sort of controls where the breaks happen. Like if you keep it to none, it'll be, it'll be like this. I think this is better. Yeah. Just remove the noise altogether. And we'll also come into level two and make that 10. So it'll just, yeah, I think this is fine. Okay. Now, uh, what I, as I said, what I want to do is I want the edges to remain intact and I want the center to break. So just to show you how we can do that. Okay. So when you do a material fracture, you get like three outputs, you get the core geometry, right? If I just put a null here, you'll be able to see it. So this is the core geometry. This is, these are the constraints and then this is the proxy geometry. Okay. And what you can do is if you give the proxy geometry, certain attributes you can use that to control the rigid body simulation okay so just to show you like I'll, I'll take a transform and i'm just going to move it up so i'm just going to take a transform here and just sort of you know move up the whole thing a little bit like that okay and then i'll just put it into a rigid body solver okay so I'll just type in bullet and you'll get the rigid body bullet solver so default, you need to get the first one and the second one. And if you come into the rigid body, you'll see like, and the, at the end, you have this thing called constraints and it's generating a glue constraint. 
Now, if you don't put in the glue constraint, it's fine. It's just going to fall down and break. Okay, so I'll turn on the ground. So I'll just give it a ground plane. And if I press play, it'll just, you know, fall down and shatter, which is fine. Okay, now if I put in the glue constraints, let me just, I'll try to get a little bit higher just for, you know, demo purposes. I'm just going to like rotate it a little bit. And if I press play now, see now it doesn't break because the glue is holding it together. So what you can do is you can come into the glue constraints and let's say if I bring it down to a hundred or let's bring it down to 10, then it breaks. Okay. Like you can see, like it's still managing to hold together a bunch of stuff, but it breaks. Okay. If I bring it down to maybe one, it'll break a lot more. Yeah. See, so now the whole thing breaks. So you can sort of adjust the, the glue strength and decide like how much it's supposed to break. Okay. So what we can do now is uh, the bullet solver gives you something called as these override attributes. Okay. So you have active animated and deforming and pin. Okay. Now what you can do is uh, the active is a very simple on off switch. So if I take, right, like if I, if I take a wrangle node, Okay, and I create an integer attribute called I at active is equal to zero. And what this will do is if I plug this in into the proxy input and press play, you'll see that it just stops. Okay. Uh, one thing that can sort of clash sometimes is uh, the glue or the constraints might get in the way for what we're trying to do. So I'm just going to disconnect it temporarily. But anyways, like because the active is zero, nothing happens, right? If I make the active one, it'll just fall down and break. There you go. Okay. So what, what I can do is what, what I want is, as I said, like I want the center to remain, uh, center to break and the edges to be fixed. So just to show you how we can do that, type in integer. Okay. And you'll get a node called attribute adjust integer. Okay. So we'll plug that in over here. I'll create the attribute name as active and we'll set it to set always. And if I press play right now, you'll see like, because the constant value is zero, nothing happens. But let's say if I keep it to noise and it's like zero and one, and let's say if we can visualize this, so I'll just click on active. Uh, yeah, it sometimes visualizes. There you go. Okay. And if I press play now, See, uh, okay, let's do one thing. Let's just, you know, make it really solid like that. And we'll keep the value to zero and one. Press play and see, so some of it remained fixed. Okay. And part of it fell down. Now, if I want it to be controlled in like a linear or a radial fashion, I can change the pattern type from noise to line. Okay. And the default line goes from like one to five. We'll bring it from, you know, like from zero to five. So I'll bring it from zero to one and I'll just sort of, you know, close it in like this. So what that should do is if I press play, see, so you get one side of it falling down and the other side remains fixed. So I can just change this to radial. So let's say if I make it, uh, you know, I'll get this to get this back to zero. And I'll set this to radial and I'll just make it big enough like that. Let's do one thing. Let's just keep it slightly high so I can see what's happening. So I'll keep it to 0.1 or 0 0.02. Okay. Just to see what is breaking and what is not breaking and press play. Okay. So what's happening is going, it's going in the other direction. Like if I press play, you can see like the outside is falling and the inside isn't. So let's reverse the numbers. Okay. So the minimum value will be one. So the inside is one and the outside is zero and press play now. See, so you can see like the inside breaks. See, so just make it bigger, you know, like press enter and let's make this like, let's keep this play. Yeah. Okay. Just, you know, pull this out. Yeah. I think this is good. See, so what's going to happen is like, we'll get center pieces breaking off and the outside ones will remain fixed. Now bring this to zero. Yeah. So nothing will happen. 
because it's now on the ground and you know nothing is breaking it but what this will do is if we bring in a collision object and it starts to hit it it'll just break the center okay so take this we'll put a null here and we'll call it uh, out collide and i can just plug this into the fourth input which is collision so just take this and put it here and we'll come into the collision and we'll have to maybe make some adjustments so change this to create deforming static objects yeah i think that will be good let's see if i can visualize this so can i see the presentation let's press play and see what we get okay uh, let's just let's make some small adjustments to the collision so solver collision yeah okay so keep this geometry representation to concave let's press play there you go see yeah so it's a little too violent but that's fine okay uh Okay, it's not showing all of them, but it's fine. Like it's breaking and that's good. Okay, so let's just make some small changes. I'll, I'll just add some forces. I'll, I'll, I'll add a little bit of drag to this so I can slow it down a little bit. Yeah, I think that's good. Let it just play through. Yeah, there you go. Okay, that's fine. Let's increase the drag. See if we can sort of slow it down a bit. Yeah, I think this is fine. There you go. Okay. Wow, they're going really far. Let's try to add some drag spin to this. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, that's a lot better. Okay, one thing we can try, which is, which might cause issues, so I don't usually do it, is we can try to add some chipping to this. So let me just save this file. So the problem is adding the glue sometimes you know like causes issues so see there you go like it's working but not you know like the best thing that's happening let's see how this looks not bad let's see how it looks without the glue yeah let's keep it without the glue i think this looks better or uh, let's try to lower the glue strength even more so let's make it like 0.3. Yeah, I think I think I'm good with this. Let let's keep this. Okay. So what we can do is we can come into the rigid body fract the material fracture node, and you have things that you can do. So we can try to add some. Uh, we can add some edge detail. So that will help a little bit. It slows down a lot. Uh, you might have to lower the element size because our geometry is too small. So let's make it 0 0.05. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so now if I press play and see what we get. Yeah, so you'll get a little more, you know, like chipping on the whole thing. Or like the pieces will be a little more deformed. Uh, let's see if we can get lower. Let's go to 0 0.01. Uh, lacunarity. Okay, let's try to lower the detail size to 0 0.1. See what we get. I think that's going to make it more wiggly. Whoa, okay, that's way too much. Let's go to 0 0.03. Yeah, I think this is fine. Let's play with this. Yeah, there you go. That light looks a lot better. Perfect. And what we can try is, uh, let's keep it to 0 0.04. We can also try to add some chipping. Okay, so chipping is is kind of okay, but it could slow it down a fair bit. Okay, so let's let's play this and see what we get. Yeah, there you go. That looks nice. Yeah, that looks that looks pretty detailed overall. Yeah, okay. So let's keep this. Let's let's have this as our you know, basic rigid body. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. So this is how we do, you know, like a basic ground break using 
the lightning and you know rigid body fracture all right so before i close this the one problem that i noticed was that it's only picking up one lightning like we have three but it's only picking up one of them so what we can do is uh, i can try to do something else like let's take a remesh so you'll find something called remesh to grid okay or let's try to take the basic remesh i don't know what that will do yeah okay uh let's get the target size to 0 0.1 no, let's go lower 0 0.02. Okay, uh, let's see if this works. So I'm just gonna come in here, press play. Nope, it's still only showing one. Okay, let's let's try something else. Let's take a remesh to grid, which is basically doing a, it's doing like a VDB. Okay, so let's drop that in. And uh, let's get the division size to 0 0.01, sorry, 0. No, lower still 0 0.005. Let's go to 0 0.025, which I think should be good. Okay. And also we'll try to, no, I think let's keep it to this. Okay. And now let's, let's check this. I don't know why it's happening. I don't know why it's only picking up one. There we go. Okay. Now we got all three. Now I think the problem that's happening, why it's not exploding is probably because of the glue constraint. So let's get rid of the glue and see what we get. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So what we can do is when we, because we have like those multiple lightnings, we'll use like a rigid body. Uh, sorry, we'll use a remesh to grid and then uh, just remove the glue constraint. So that will cause the whole thing to, you know, explode more than it was before. Okay. So let this compute. And as I said, the next lesson, uh, I'll do the particles.